<laughs> oh, good morning. <laughs> In a quandary here this morning, uh, debating with myself what to talk about. I finally settled on this title. Being authentic or being no one. <laughs> what should I talk about today? There are several directions I could take and none of them feel powerful to me. The one I am choosing will deal with two videos sent to me yesterday, one in an email and the other posted on my Facebook wall. The first was Muji. Oh, yeah, the first was Muji. <laughs> Nobody has to be anyone. The second was exactly the opposite. It was a Lilu interview with Panache Desai. Willingness to be yourself authentically and vulnerably. I hated the first one and loved the second. The last thing I would want to practice is being no one. That's not our reason for having a human experience, as I see it. The synchronicity in being presented both videos back to back did, it, did catch my attention, and I was so happy to get the second one immediately after hearing the first. Here are the videos, and I put the links up in the blurb on this uh, on this video for you YouTube listeners and for you Facebook watchers. Anyway, <laughs> uh, somebody wrote in a comment on yesterday's video: "Get back to love." I should probably look look at that one. Uh, let's see. If I can find it. Uh, I probably, <laughs> here I am looking when I should be talking. At, uh, oh, yeah, here it is. Hi, Ron, love you, but you have lost all perspective. Return to love. Stop trying to control other people. Otherwise, we are as bad as those seeking to control us. Remember, love attracts its like, but you are attracting negative, low vibrational experiences with these tirades. And that was silence is acquiesced. That was my video from yesterday, which if I remember right, at the end I said, I love you. And, I, and, and to me, it is love. And, and th what those two videos that I mentioned in the blurb contrasted for me was two approaches to spirituality. One is the Eastern mystical approach of self-denial, which actually has some Western counterparts, but it's everything is an illusion. The ego is bad. You've got to escape yourself. You've got to be nobody. And, and by the way, I like Muji. I mean, I've, I've listened to some of his videos and been inspired. This one I absolutely did not like at all. And the only reason I watched over a half an hour of it, and it was over a half an hour, is because of the person who sent it to me, one of my very best friends, who wants to use that video <laughs> in an upcoming workshop. And I almost, my thought was, well, if that's what the workshop's going to be about, I'm not even going to go this time. I mean, that's honestly what I felt when I did that. But then I went to my face, I got a message uh, that something was posted on my wall. My friend, one of my other friends, posted something for me, and and it was the in Lilu interview, as I mentioned in the blurb. And Panache says, "Be yourself. Don't if you if you're judgmental, if you've got an ego, don't just be authentic. Be real about it." Man, I loved that. I mean, I needed so much to hear that after hearing Muji go on and on for over a half an hour about practicing a spirituality of being no one. Now, I understand what he, where he's coming from. We can get so wrapped up in our ego that we forget our spiritual reality. And, th and that's the whole purpose of that spiritual practice. But I ask you a question. Just look back at what you know of, of, of human history. Tell me how many no ones made an impact on the world. Name one of them. Just one. Name one no one that made an impact. 
If they made an impact on the world, we know who they were, or otherwise they wouldn't have made an impact. People that are practicing being nobody leave, do not leave their mark on the world, do not leave any indentation, do not leave footprints, because nobody was home. And I don't want, I don't want my life to look back from my spiritual perspective at the light, at my physical life called Ron Van Dyke, my physical ID, if you will, called Ron Van Dyke in the 20th, 21st century, who came on the scene and didn't leave any footprints, and nobody knows whether he was there or not. Well, he might have touched one or two people, but he didn't really make much of an impact. I mean, unless you were right next to him, you probably didn't even know who he was. Well, if that's your spiritual practice and that's the way you want to go and that's your calling, okay, well, then I guess that's your calling. But it's not mine. One of the things after I was so wounded with the uh, relationship issue with the lady in Canada, I wanted to throw in the towel and I've made it a point to, I'm going to reassess everything and I've come to this part, this much of a conclusion. The path that I've chosen to try to change the world as much as I can to influence the way people think in the world, the way people are in the world, and to make the world safe. And it's not safe. I, I watched another video yesterday. Uh, let me look at, let me look that one up too. Um, if I can find it. Um, it was also posted on my Facebook wall. And it was, do we create our own reality? And it was um, Teal, Ask Teal, uh, if we create our own reality, how do you explain suffering? And I want to tell you, she did an excellent job of talking about that subject. I probably should put that video up on, on there too, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. In any case, you know, she talked about her childhood abuse and everything, and she believes that she chose that. She chose the abuse. Now, I'm sorry. Even though I felt her authenticity in explaining it, which which I didn't feel Muji's authenticity. I mean, he's bullshitting this woman that he's given the advice to. Teal is not. Teal Scott is not bullshitting people. She's saying what she genuinely feels and believes, and she really believes that every single one of us on this planet creates our own reality, and we choose every experience that we go through. We have personally, at the soul level at least, made the choice to do that, to experience that. I'm sorry. If I honestly believe that about the world, I would practice what Muji says being nobody. Because what the hell difference does it make? Everybody's chosen the exact experience and there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do to, allevi to alleviate the pain and suffering. Nothing that you can do to make the situation better. Nothing that you can do to improve or fix or repair anything. And I know there's an awful lot of spiritual teachers that say there's nothing to be fixed. We are perfect just the way we are. And I can see that. I can see that. But love, to me, getting back to the person who says I moved away from love, is first and foremost alleviating suffering. First and foremost, it's accepting what is and accepting the person as they are and listening to them, hearing what they're saying. And every, every painful recitation of of suffering that we go through. Every time we have a story that has suffering in it, it's a cry for love. It's a cry for love. And I choose to love by allowing people to be exactly where they are and not trying to get them to be nobody. Not trying to get them to put their ego aside and put themselves down and think that by some act of separation from the human experience, we're going to become better or more enlightened, or more powerful, or more anything. You don't become more by becoming less, although, paradoxically, 
I can see that sometimes you do. And, and, and yes, I have to say paradoxically, because we play these opposites ag against each other. We do this dueling with the opposites within ourselves, which is why there's so much dueling and polarization in the world. My job is to integrate the opposites. It's not to transcend even duality. It's to integrate duality and find the dance within the duel, the dance of swords, if you will. It's to find that dance and to be the best me I can be and to touch as many lives as I can so that maybe, maybe the world can be a little bit better place because I've been here. Not, well, I was nobody. I was nobody and I was, that was my path. I mean, I just chose to be nobody. I followed my guru's advice and I realized that all of my suffering came from trying to be somebody and trying to, to make an impact and to make an impression and to leave my mark. But I realize that that's all ego and I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to be a nobody. I'm going to be absolutely the best nobody I can be so that when I die, when I leave this body, no one will even have known that I was here. And that will mean that I was a spiritually great one. And I want to leave that mark as a spiritually great nobody. That's where I want to be. And if you think I'm being sarcastic, you're damn tootin'. I don't want to be known for my mediocrity. I want to be the best me I can be the best Ron Van Dyke I'm capable of being. And I want to help the world become a better place, a safer place, a more loving place. That's the impact that I want my life to make on this world. I don't want it to be like the pebble in the stream that sends out its ripples. And if you wait long enough, the ripples are no longer there. Very, just a temporary flash of ripples from one stone landing on the surface of the pond. Hmm. I want the ripples to go out and out and out. And like Gandhi and like others that, that we can remember, like Jesus and like the Buddha, I want to say, like Quinyan, they left their mark. They left their mark. People are still talking about them centuries and even millennia later. People are still talking about the impact of the one solitary life that dared, that dared to say, I am the way. I am truth. I am. I am. Talk about ego. That's ego. Who shall I say sent me, Moses asked in the burning bush experience. I am that I am. I am that I am. Ego. God is ego. God is personhood. God is identity. I am. I am. The whole purpose of, of life is to establish an identity, to be authentic and genuine, as Panache says, to be whatever you are. If you're judgmental, own it. If you have an ego, own it. Whatever you are, own it. Be what you are. Be authentic. Be genuine. And that's what I do in these videos. It's why I do these videos. If you don't like it, if your spirituality is one that you want to practice egolessness and being nobody, well, have at it. But that's not what I'm about. And if that offends you, Sorry, sayonara. <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's okay. You are where you are. But this is where I am, and I'm saying it like it is. And I thank you for listening, whether you liked it or not. And I love you, regardless of which way you choose. If you want to be a nobody, be a nobody. I'd rather you choose to be authentic and tell the truth.
because I don't think there's a human being on this planet that truly wants to be nobody. Namaste. <laughs> oh my goodness.